In the last 15 years, thousands of U.S. police, border agents, ICE officers, and FBI officials have traveled to Israel. We bring over to Israel American police chiefs, sheriffs, law enforcement of every type. Israeli military personnel also travel to the U.S. to exchange tactics with police departments and state agencies. So what's wrong with these exchanges? Under the banner of counter-terrorism training, officials visit Israeli checkpoints, settlements, prisons, secret service, and airports. In each of these sites, human rights groups have documented Israeli discrimination, repression, torture, and killing of Palestinians. And the far-right administrations of Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump are magnifying these human rights abuses, whether that means escalating settlement construction in Israel or ramping up deportations and Islamophobic travel bans in the U.S. You know, in Israel, they profile. They've done a, an unbelievable job, as good as you can do. The police exchanges are one place among many where these two repressive governments deepen their relationship. What is really being exchanged? Arms. These exchange trips occur in the context of larger U.S.-Israeli security collaboration, which includes a constant flow of weaponry. Israel is known as the world's shopping mall for homeland security technologies. The U.S. supplies them with $3.8 billion each year and with weapons, such as tear gas used against peaceful protesters in both countries. These exchanges build relationships between officials who work for both the government and in private arms and security industries. Tactics A major focus of the exchange trips is how to expand existing surveillance practices in both countries, with little regard for human or civil rights. Israel has more surveillance companies per capita than any other country in the world, and uses non-stop surveillance in its military occupation of Palestinians. Spying is also key to policing in the U.S., which has the biggest sheer number of surveillance companies in the world. Hewlett-Packard, for example, developed the high-tech identification cards that Israeli security forces use at occupied West Bank checkpoints to collect facial, fingerprint, and retinal data. Ideology. The exchange trips advance racist policies and target social justice movements as security threats. Delegates meet with Israeli riot police, who are well documented in their use of violence when suppressing peaceful Palestinian protest. So who's going on these exchanges? Officials on these exchanges from the U.S. include officers from the NYPD that profile Muslim and Arab communities, surveilling every mosque within 100 miles of New York City and beyond. Officers who are building the largest deportation machine in U.S. history. Officers who lead police departments that brutalize black and brown communities. The former St. Louis police chief, Timothy Fitch, trained with the Israeli military three years before Michael Brown's killing and the Ferguson uprising. Officers who attack indigenous-led social movements, like the water protectors at Standing Rock. These exchanges build relationships between these U.S. forces and Israeli officials carrying out similarly repressive, violent, and racist policies against Palestinians, Mizrahi, and Ethiopian Jews, and political activists. Simply put, these trips serve as an exchange of worst practices, emboldening racist policing in the U.S. and holding up an occupying army as a global gold standard. At Jewish Voice for Peace, we were disturbed to learn that many of the organizations running these exchange programs are institutions in our own community, including civil rights organizations. To shut down the deadly exchange, we feel obligated to start with these complicit organizations in our own communities. They include the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, the Anti-Defamation League, and even Birthright Israel. As a Jewish organization, we feel a particular responsibility to address those who run these programs in our names. We believe civil rights organizations and Jewish communal institutions should not dispatch police, ICE, and FBI agents to swap tactics with an occupying army. Ending these exchange programs will not instantaneously bring about justice for Palestinians or fundamentally transform generations of racist policing in the U.S. But we do believe that it's a simple, concrete, and important step in that direction. 
and one we can take right now. Ending these exchanges starts in your community. We'll bring this fight to the policymakers in our communities and hold accountable the Jewish institutions who run and fund the deadly exchange. The truth is, none of our communities are safe when our family, friends, and neighbors are being targeted by racist policing, surveillance, occupation, and apartheid. What does make us safe? We create the path to safety by building joint struggles for justice and showing up to protect and defend one another. That's the exchange we must grow between people's movements for justice, equality, and dignity. Join the campaign with Jewish Voice for Peace at deadlyexchange.org.